Good morning. Can we take just a moment and put our hands together and tell Jesus that we love him today. That's why we're here. So great to see each of you here today. We've, we've navigated our way through Ian. I know some are still being impacted by it. My sister lives over in Smyrna, and they still got a lot of flooding, at least all through the, kind of towards the end part of this week. But you are here today. You're here to be refreshed. You're here to be encouraged. So grateful, so thankful to the Lord that for 23 years, City Church has been on a mission of bringing God's love to this city one person at a time, and that's why we're here, to see the love of God, come on, to see the love of God go from our lives into this city and around the world. Thank you for being with us today. Today, we kick off a brand new series entitled Legacy. Everyone say Legacy. We kind of started last week. We had Pastor Gary Hall with us, and man, he just did such an amazing job of sharing what God has done in and through his life and how God has called our church to partner with others. If you didn't get a chance to see last week's message, I would encourage you to go back to our citychurchfl.org website, and you there you can watch the message. It was such a great, great encouraging message, but I want to encourage you today. God has a word for you. Come on, say, God has a word for me. God has a word for you today, and I want you to stand with me in the honor of reading God's word. I'm going to look at one scripture verse for emphasis today, found in Acts chapter 20, verse number 35. Paul the apostle is speaking here, and he's talking about his life and talking about a legacy that he is leaving for the next generation. And this is what he says. He says, in everything I did, I showed you that by the kind of hard, hard work that we do, we must help the weak. One translation says, we must help the poor. Remembering the words of the Lord Jesus himself. Now, what's fascinating about this is that there's no place recorded in the four gospels where Jesus actually ever said this. Here's what you got to understand. That by the Paul was saying this and communicating to the church at Ephesus here, by the time that Paul was speaking these words, it was already in the common vernacular of the local churches. That the heart of Jesus, that the heart of God is this thing very here, very, this, this very thing here. It is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Jesus himself said this. It is more blessed to give than it is to receive. On the count of three, in unison, I, want, I, I won't say it, but I want everyone in the audience to say what Jesus said. All right, just what Jesus said. One, two, three. One more time. On the count of three. One, two, three. It is more blessed to give than it is to receive. Let's pray. Father, in these next few moments, we thank you for the truth and the power of who you are. We thank you that you've called us to live a living legacy. God, that we can leave something not just for future generations, but God, today we can do something now that makes an impact in our city, our community, and our world. We love you. God, I pray that these next few moments you'll give every person here a spiritual ear to hear, whether they're here for the first time or they've been here hundreds of times. God, I pray that their hearts will be open to hear and to receive from you. We don't take this moment for granted. We, we don't take the declaration of, of your word, preaching your word for granted today. We know that we need your grace. We need your strength. We need your empowerment to say the things that you want me to say. So give us spiritual ears to hear. Give us spiritual eyes to see and give me a mouth to speak. We love you, Jesus. We bless your people. We bless the word. In Jesus' wonderful and mighty and powerful name. And everyone said, amen. amen. You may be seated today. When you came in today, you received a little card like this. Today's part one. You got to come back next week for part two. As a matter of fact, this Friday night, if you have not been invited or if you have been invited to our legacy dinner and have not responded, I want to encourage you to respond. You received an email sometime this last week or two from Melanie Castro. I would encourage you, please respond. Because this coming Friday night, October 14th, we're going to lay out the vision. We're going to have to lay out the dream of legacy for City Church for 2023. And we, what we believe to be a window of hope for other people around the world. We'll talk more about that. 
But in your, in your hand today, you received a little card that just kind of gives you a little quick snapshot of some of the commitments that we are making in the year 2023 as a church family. This is our legacy giving. Now, many of you here maybe are hearing this for the very first time. We have a team of people here at City Church that are committed to giving above the tithe. They give to missions. They give to special projects. A couple of weeks, or last week, I stood up and I talked about Convoy of Hope and, and how that we have a first responder ministry that was right there on the ground. I don't know if you've seen this, but in the news the last couple of weeks, all these people that are down, uh, down serving people in the Fort, Fort Myers area, all the local churches, I mean, so many local churches. As a matter of fact, I saw a report this week that said the local churches beat FEMA to serving the people. Come on. The local churches beat FEMA. Do you know why? Because there were Christians like you that have been giving to ministries like Convoy of Hope that enable them to be prepared to instantly respond to natural disasters, not only here in America, but around the world. So we're going to talk about some of these projects. We, you, this card right here has three different lanes. We have three different areas that we commit to giving towards here at City Church. The first one is missions. Everyone say missions. We currently support about 65 missionaries. This next year, our goal, somebody wants me to share my password with them. I'm not going to do that. Sorry about that there. <laughs> Electronic technology, huh? We support missions. We support missionaries. We support projects around the globe that make an impact, not just here in our local church, but they make an impact in other people's lives who will never be able to repay. And we're going to challenge this church this coming year in 2023 to offer a window of hope to people around the world like we never have. We're going to increase not our standard of giving here at City Church. We're going to increase our standard of giving here at City Church. And this Sunday and Next, this coming Friday night and next Sunday, you're going to hear some amazing stories of how your giving here at City Church has touched and really brought change and transformation to people around the globe. So we're going to encourage you. You received this card today because I'm going to ask you to pray. At the end of the service today, you're not going to give towards legacy. We're just going to ask you to pray about what God would have you to do in this coming year. I'm not asking you to do anything that we haven't done. My wife and I are praying about what the Lord would have us to do. This is above my tithe. This is above what I give to support so that the lights can stay on and we do the things that we do here. This is giving to people who will never be able to repay. The second lane that we have here is projects. And all of our projects are around impacting people that are not necessarily here in our local church. These are projects that enable us to reach into our community in a bigger way. You have a couple of the projects that are listed there. And the last one is next generation. Everyone say next generation. This is the heart of City Church. Front row, first service, we had Pastor Joe and Pastor Christina. If you don't know them, they're our next generation pastors. And they are absolutely the finest next generation pastors in the whole planet. Let's give them a great big hand today. Everybody under the age of 25, they're responsible for. That, inclu and that includes our City Church Academy. If you don't know here, we have a school. It has a, a, currently has 155 students in, and most of those students, their families do not attend a local church or this local church. And we get an opportunity to every day teach them the gospel and preach the gospel and take care of the, of the children in our community. And I got to tell you today, there's such a demand for people. There's such a demand from this community for their children to hear about the ways and the word of God. And we're so encouraged what the City Church Academy is doing. But we also have not only the academy that we're focused on, but right here in our local church, our, our children's ministry today. We have some of the finest children's pastors in America with Pastor Nathan and Pastor Kim. Amen. <laughs> pastor Nathan actually this week has spent a whole week in New York learning how to become a better children's pastor. And I've been following him on social media this week, man, and he's been out ministering to kids, and he's learning how to do things more effectively. But more importantly, he's getting a heart for the kids, not only in our city and community, but he's getting the heart, for, heart of God for kids around the world. And we're so excited to hear about what God is going to do in and through City Church Academy, our Next Generation Youth Ministry, our college and career. This is all part of Next Generation. And I want to challenge you today. I want to challenge you today. We read our scripture verse. The word of God challenges every person here to leave 
Not just leave, not just leave, but to live a living legacy. To live a living legacy. I define legacy like this. Something of value or worth passed down from an ancestor or a predecessor. Something that's passed down from one generation to the next generation. I got to tell you, I know. I know how I went from knowing about God to really believing God. One of the key indicators that I was really good saved, beside all the things that happened in the external of my life and all the relationships that God began to restore, one of the main things that happened in my life is that this thing right here got saved. When I gave my life to Jesus, I got to tell you, I, I, had, I was a waiter. I started working in the restaurant business when I was 16, and I used to work for tips. Everyone say tips. And I never once thought about sharing my tips with other people. They were my tips. Matter of fact, I remember one time I was working in a restaurant, and one of the other waiters stole some of the cash tip that was in my th- I was so mad. He stole my tip. But you know what happened? You know what happened when I got good saved? When I got good saved, I couldn't wait to give. I could not wait to give. I go to church on Sunday, and since I made cash every night that I worked, they didn't have, it wasn't checks they gave out, and we got cash every night, and I'd go to church, and I'd bring all my ones, and I would, man, I would tithe, and I would give to missions, and I couldn't wait to, and if I missed a Sunday, I'd run down on Monday, and I couldn't wait. That's how I know that my heart was really changed. You see, I want to challenge us today. I want to challenge us today. There was a study done at Harvard just in the last few years, and it talked about people who live generously. They called it the science of generosity, and they explained why humans were designed to be generous and why people who give of their time, goods, and resources experience positive benefits. They call it giving social support is associated with better overall health in older adults. Volunteering is associated with delayed mortality would explain the paper. The science, the science of generosity. I want to tell you today, it's more than a science. It's a spiritual reality of something that takes place inside of us. The passing on of something to another person who could never repay you. Last week when Pastor Gary was with us, he he talked to us about this. He challenged us. He He said, what will your legacy be? What will your legacy be? And then he said this. He said, legacy is not something we leave for the next generation or leave to the next generation. Yesterday, I was having a conversation with one of the older saints in our church, and they were talking about how they're positioning their, their funds and their investments so they can leave something to their children. And I began to think about, isn't that interesting? Just last week, Pastor Gary said, an inheritance isn't something we leave to someone else. It's something that we leave in someone else. An inheritance is something we leave inside of someone. It's the legacy that we leave in other people. And the only way that we can do that is by living a life of generosity. Living a life of generosity. We either live closed-fisted. Everyone say closed-fisted. Most of our culture is, lives a scarcity mindset. Most people live afraid, afraid of the future, afraid the stock market's going to crash. There's always kind of the sense like the shoe is going to drop at any moment. Most people live with the scarcity mindset, but God has called you and I to live with a generous mindset, with an open hand, with an open heart, not only towards God, but in practical, tangible ways towards other people. There's a lot of myths. There's a lot of reasons that people give why they, can't, why they can't live generously. I just wrote a couple. I actually had a whole list of them, but I'm just going to give a couple of them to you today. One of them is a lot of people think that living generously, living generously or giving to the cause of Christ or to other people is only for the rich and famous. It's only for the rich and famous. Everyone here knows about, you should know if you don't know, but most people know about Bill Gates and Warren Buffett, some of the wealthiest people in the world. They've gone out there and they've tried to convince other people to give all of their wealth away when they die. Basically, they, they, they challenge them to give you know, a percentage or give, give all away to other people. But I find interesting about these guys that have these, have these great dreams and goals to give all their wealth away. They set these foundations up while they're alive 
And guess who they give to when they're giving their money away? They give to their own organization that they're ahead of. Now, you know, that's not a horrible thing per se, but I do find it interesting that sometimes we can fall into this trap of thinking that giving is someone else's responsibility. Well, the rich is going to take care of it. Or the famous people, they can do it, but I can't do it. Proverbs 10, 7 says it like this. The memory of the righteous is a blessing. The memory of the righteous. This idea in the Hebrew here has a total understanding of giving something. Giving something that will leave a memory in the lives of others that is a blessing. The memory of the righteous is a blessing, but the name of the wicked will rot. And other, other times, I've heard people say something like this. Well, pastor, I just can't afford to do it. If you just saw my budget, I don't make any money. I tell people, you can't afford to do it. You can't afford not to do it. Proverbs eleven twenty four 24 says, the world of the generous gets larger and larger, and the world of the stingy gets smaller and smaller. You can't afford not to do it. Last night, I know you can't believe this, but I did go on social media, and uh, I was scrolling through Facebook, and I saw a former member attender of City Church, and some and it was posted on and it was posting on there, and someone had posted about uh, tithing, and there was like a little article that was written, and it said said the seven blessings of tithing, and then they gave this a long diatribe of why they didn't believe in the tithe. And I was just sitting there, and I was reading that, and. Um, I had a lot of good thoughts going through my mind right then. <laughs> my first thought, I'm not going to tell you my first thought. I'm going to tell you my second thought. <laughs> my second thought, I actually posted. I just simply posted underneath this long diatribe of why I don't believe tithing is for the church today. I simply posted, I live and love to give. How many of you want to know what my first, come on, amen. How many of you want to know what my first thought was? You know what my first thought was? You freeloader. <laughs> you sat at City Church all those years. You enjoyed the seat. Man, somebody else, somebody believed in it because those seats you're sitting in, they were paid for. You enjoyed the air. I mean, you enjoyed all the benefits of worshiping and all the blessings that came with being part of the community. You stinking freeloader. That's my thought. That, was, that wasn't the spirit. That was just the flesh. Don't argue with people about tithing. I mean... Man, it's way beyond that, folks. It's way beyond that. The world of the generous gets bigger and bigger, larger and larger. Opportunities grow bigger and bigger and bigger. We have a couple sitting in the back that you're going to be hearing from them this Friday night. And I see Evan and his beautiful wife back here. They're missionaries right here from City Church. And I remember when Evan came to me, and he was on staff, and he said, Pastor, Man, I just can't escape it. I got to do something more. And I looked at his life. I said, there's a man whose heart is expanding. Expanding beyond just our walls, but expanding to the world to bring the message of hope and the gospel of Jesus. You can't afford not to do it is what I say. Another excuse or myth that people give for not being able to give and not be able to, to, to live a life of open-handedness is that they just, well, the church doesn't really need my money. Man, that you know, you, that's, I mean, I, I don't have that much. I don't make that much. I just, you know, I only make a little bit. Someone else can pick up the slack. I want you to know today, it's not about what the church needs. It's about what you need. Look what Paul the Apostle says to the church at 1 Corinthians. He's writing to this church. Listen, the church at Corinth, it was, they were living in such a pagan generation all the stuff that we have going on in our culture and generation, all the confusion about sexuality and, gen and promiscuousness and greed and avarice and brokenness. Man, the church at Corinth was living right in the middle of that kind of culture. And in the, in the midst of that, God pours out his spirit. And there's this group of people who catch fire the message of Jesus. There's this group of people that become passionately in love with Jesus. And spiritual gifts are being used. And people's lives are being impacted. And miracles are taking place. And in the midst of that, Paul has to remind them. And this is what he says to them. On every Lord's Day, for us that Sunday, 
the first day of the week, the early church, the Jews would meet on Shabbat on Saturday. We meet on, uh, on Sunday. The Jews, their Sabbath was Saturday. For the believers, the first day of the week, which separated the Jews from the Christians on the first day of the week, which was Sunday. So today, you know what you did? Your first, when you came to church today, you gave the very first day of your week to God. And you know what I want to do today? I want to clap for you. I just want to clap for you. I want to just cheer you on today. Each of you should put, a, put aside something from what you've earned during the week, using it for this offering. Every Sunday, there was an offering taken. Every Sunday at the end of the service, we, we, we pass. We don't even pass the plates or buckets anymore, which I think we're going to start doing. But, but uh, we challenge people, you know, the QR. We have all these different ways that we give QR code and text to give. And we have people that give reoccurring. If you are a reoccurring giver here at City Church and you're doing online, I celebrate. Thank you for, you've already committed in your heart. You're already living this verse out. But you commit the first day of the week. The amount depends on how much the Lord has helped you. The, if the Lord just helped you a little tiny bit, you don't have air in your lo- lungs, <laughs> you just give a little bit. But the Lord's helped you this week because we give out a heart of gratitude. We give because we're so grateful for the grace and the love that God has demonstrated to us. You see, we are living a legacy. We're not just leaving a legacy. We're living a legacy in the lives of other people. You say, oh, Pastor uh, Pastor Eugene, how do I do that? I want you to check out one of the projects that we're picking up this year as a church family as we live and leave a legacy to people who can never repay. Check this video out. Hi, Pastor Smith and friends at City Church. Ryan Moore here at Builders International. Right now, countless children are wandering the streets of Santiago, Chile, day and night. Of the 6.5 million people in Santiago, over 70% are born in a home that is fatherless. Many children are raised by prostitutes, drug dealers, addicts, And because of that, even those that have a home find themselves facing a threat in a place that's supposed to be safe. The Santiago Children's Ministry Outreach Center was started by missionaries Jim and Esther, Missouri, 30 years ago to reach these children in need. Today, it has grown into a church and they are now expanding to include education. Let me tell you about four siblings we call Cuatro Niños, Ignacio, Cassandra, Jesus, and Brian. They were ages three to nine when they were found wandering around the dangerous streets of Santiago and all of them filthy and traumatized by sexual abuse. They were rescued and taken to the Santiago Children's Ministry Outreach Center where they were connected with a Christian family who eventually adopted them. Today, they are living successful lives and serving in the church. There are countless children wandering the streets of Santiago and Chile, just like the Cuatro Niños, and they are searching for hope. The Santiago Children's Ministry Outreach Center continues to meet the spiritual needs of these children. They connect these children with the appropriate professionals to provide vital social services, and most importantly, share the hope of the gospel with them. They have now expanded to include a church, a ministry center, and they're going to be opening a school. Right now, the work is moving forward. The church has been built and they're preparing to build the school. Will you join us today and by your generosity, help make this project possible? This new facility will allow the ministry to offer a private Christian education as an alternative to the hyper-secularized and atheistic government schools. Once finished, children like the Cuatro Niños will have a safe place to find hope and seek an education. And we believe many of them will become future Christian leaders. Let me say a special thank you in advance for all you are doing to help make this project possible. Come on, City Church, are you thankful for what the Lord's doing? What an honor it is to be with you this morning. My name's Jeremy Godwin. I'm the assistant director at Builders International. The story that you just heard was just one of many stories. 
In fact, right now we have 37 projects just like this in 32 different countries all around the world. And I'm not saying that for any other reason but to brag on Jesus because he said, in the last days I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail against it. Amen. And right now in Chile, we're seeing the outpouring of God in such a unique way. You know, of those 37 projects, there's a couple of them that really just touch my heart. We build churches and schools, medical clinics and orphanages like this. And one of the things that pricked my heart about this project is for 30 years, the ground has been broken up. 30 years of ministry has been taking place in the trenches. You saw the Missouriks on the video just a moment ago. She's from Chile. She's a national. He was born and raised as a missionary kid and stayed as a missionary in the nation. They, they live and breathe what they're doing. And for the past 30 years, they've come up against obstacle after obstacle, and they've pressed through. And most recently, there's been a, a massive change in the nation. The government has shifted to more of a socialistic country, much like the other surrounding nations. In fact, to the extent that they're in the process of right now completely changing the Constitution. Now, you can imagine what that's going to do to this nation even deeper. A place where they're, as you heard, 70% of the kids are from broken families, homes without fathers, raised through prostitution, sexually abused, drug addictions, and gangs. I could tell you sob story after sob story, but what I want to do is celebrate the fact that Jesus is alive. The four kids that have been rescued are only four of hundreds of uh, stories that are out there, thousands that are coming to the ministry, and you're part of every one of them. I don't know if you could tell in the video when, when we had the pleasure of having the Missouriks with us and, and uh, recently we, we were hearing their story and out of nowhere she just started talking about the windows that were opening, the windows into these kids' lives, kids that have known nothing but abuse and neglect and abandonment, that there's windows that are opening into their lives as now they're having the opportunity to get an education. Now they're having an opportunity to, to hear the gospel, find hope, to, to find a hope for the future. And I don't, I don't know about you, but when I heard her talk about this window that was opening up, all I could think about was the window of opportunity, the window of blessing, the window of promises, the window that Jesus talks about that is available to us when we give our lives to Christ. Yeah, there's a window that's opening right now, and it's a race to get to these kids. With the changes in the, the local government system, there's a, there's a race to reach a generation with indoctrination. Can I tell you this? It is a race to win a child's heart, and the first person there usually wins. Did you hear me? It's a race to win a child's heart, and the first person there usually wins. That's what the Santiago Children's Ministry Center is all about. It's a place to win the race. It's a place to get there first and share the gospel and the hope of Jesus Christ. You know, this is an amazing story. It's an amazing project. It's an amazing opportunity. But the thing that really pricks my heart is when I look at the faces of the kids. See, being a missionary, I get to go and be a part of these stories, and I get to be hands-on with the ministry. Kids that you may never get to see when you give a dollar. Children that you may never get to talk to on this side of eternity. But how many of you are thankful that when we leave a legacy, it may be something left on this side, but we get to invest in a generation that we get to celebrate with on the other side of eternity. Amen? We are building hope in Chile, and you're a part of it. From Builders International, I just want to say thank you for believing in missions. Thank you for being such an amazing church. Thank you, Pastor, for your heart for the world. Your community is amazing. Your church is amazing. What God's doing here is nothing short of a miracle. But friends, I'm here to tell you and celebrate with you that God is moving around the world and we get to be a part of it. Come on, church. Can you say amen to that? I was talking to the Missourics the other day. I just want to share this one last story. And we're talking about just the opportunities and the things that God's doing and the, the, the way God's pouring out blessing. And we were talking about the numbers and the logistics of the project, how many teams it's going to take, you know, all the different things that go into that. That's what we do at Builders. And he began to tell me that the government is so excited about this new school, this new educational opportunity, that they're wanting to help fund it all. And in my ignorance, I said, that's awesome. That's less money that we have to raise. 
the government wants to actually help give to it? That's, that's incredible. They're investing into this vision. And he goes, no, Jeremy. If we take $1, just $1, we then have to open up our doors to the agendas, the indoctrination. No more teaching kids that they're made in the image of God. No more telling a little boy or girl that they, they're a son or a daughter to the king. All it takes is $1 and we lose our opportunity to present the gospel. And I said, well, we'll do our best to make sure that that $1 comes from the kingdom and not from the government. Thank you. Thank you, church, for investing in the legacy of a generation that will change the world in Chile. God bless you. So what's our motivation today? Why are we doing what we are doing? First, simply, it's this. We are fulfilling the command of Jesus to go. I mean, the very last thing that Jesus said to his disciples before he left planet Earth, the resurrected Christ, in Mark's Gospel, chapter 16, Jesus said, go into all the world and preach the what? Preach the Republican Party. Preach the Democratic Party. Preach the United States Constitution. No, 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 no. The very first thing that we are to do, we're to go into all the world and preach the good news that Jesus is alive. He is resurrected. He is the King of Kings. He is the hope of every generation. We are called to go into all the world and to preach to every person. And for all those who believe, we then baptize. We have a mission today. And that is to go. And let me tell you, there has never been a time in human history like today. Yeah. I was reading recently about the founding of the United States. And in 1790, do you know what percentage of Americans that were here when the Constitution was written, do you know what percentage of Americans were farmers? Were farmers. Anybody want to take a guess? Oh, well, with my son down the front, he's a smart one. Smart one in the family. 90%. 90% of the people that lived in this country the found, at our foundation, 90% were farmers. Most people spent most of their days trying to figure out how to feed themselves and their families. That's a fact. That's a fact. And if you didn't farm, you were going to have a really cold, hungry winter. It's a fact. Today... I would, I'd like to see, is there anyone in this room that actually is a farmer? You farm your own food. Anyone here today? Got one little boy over here. He's still farming. <laughs> Come on, anybody here today? We don't farm. We have all this time that's been given to us by God. We do all kinds of things with our time. We spend a lot of time on social media. We watch movies. We watch Netflix. We get sucked into Netflix Anyone, you see like that, like the last 20 seconds, it starts to count down. It starts to roll into the next one. It's like planned to keep you hooked, right? You're only going to watch a 22-minute program. Like it's 44 minutes. Come on, anybody else do that beside me? I've been given the benefit of time. We live in the wealthiest generation in the history of the whole world. When President Bill Clinton, when he was president, the, the gross domestic product of the United States of America was several trillion dollars. Several trillion. Today, it's over 30 trillion dollars. Now, we spend every dollar of that plus. I mean, we've never seen such wealth. We've been given more resources, more time. You know what that tells me? It tells me that the coming of Jesus Christ is getting closer and closer and closer because, folks, we have a window of hope. We have an opportunity. We have a moment in human history to usher in the return of Jesus. And one of the ways that we're going to do it is by going, taking the gospel into the whole world. Come on, to make the name of Jesus famous in our generation. Someone said amen today. If you believe that, give the Lord a hand clap today. That missionary woman that you saw in that video just a moment ago, when she was speaking, she actually used the phrase, window of hope. Window of hope. I was like, whoa. My wife and I both immediately were like, our hearts were just touched. And we made a commitment as a church family to this project. 
We made a commitment personally as Christians. Personally, we made a commitment to this orphanage that Jeremy represents today. We're going to do something large there. We're going to do something significant. But not just there. Around the globe, missionaries that we're going to su support, we're providing a window of hope. And here's the cool thing. We get to share, we get to share in the reward of those that we're supporting. We get to share. In other words, when we s support a missionary, we're going to support, our goal is to support 80 missionaries around the globe and multiple projects that we're already committed to. And when we do that, most of the people that we're giving to, most of the missions and the missionaries that are on the ground ministering to those people, probably none of, this, none of us in this room, save a few, will ever meet them. But guess what? We get to share in the reward of that missionary who's on the ground sharing the good news. Paul the Apostle to the church at Philippi, he said, no one else but you shared with me in preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ. And because of that, there's a reward coming to you. Look at verse number 17. He says, I don't say this because I want a gift from you. Rather, I want you to receive a reward. What I'm telling you today, what I'm challenging you to do in giving to legacy and providing a window of hope for other people is not for Eugene Smith. It's not for some kind of reward for me. But it's for you. Because there's a reward to those who give. Look what he says here. And because you do this, the same God, the same God that is being preached, the same gospel that's being preached, guess what? Now that God will supply and meet all of your needs according to his riches and glory. Someone said amen today. God gives to us in measure to what we've given to others because here's the bottom line. We get to leave a legacy. We get to leave a legacy that's noticed by God. There's a brother in our church that's heading to feeding ministry. And he shared with me multiple times about what God's put in his heart. He showed me the videos. Boy, he's got some great videos. And just a couple of weeks ago, he was in the country of Columbia. And he sent this video to me. And I want you just to see a quick little video of what we've been able to partner with, with this brother in the country of Columbia by leaving, by living a legacy. Check this video out. Hey guys, how are you? This is Pablo Pirela from Heart of Hope. We are here in La Guajira, Venezolana y Colombiana. We are in the, in the side of Colombia right now. And this is, uh, this is uh, something that uh, a church in Sanford, Florida um, uh, made possible. Uh, so you guys can do the same. You, you can also help us helping people. And we are here helping these families. And we are delighted because we're bringing hope to them the hope of Jesus. Thank you so much for what you're doing. This is City Church, but it can be also your church. So in, on behalf of City Church and Heart of Hope Ministries, we are giving this uh, beautiful uh, baskets with food to the needy, and also we are preaching the gospel. Thank you so much. God bless you. I want Pab Pablo is right down. Pablo is one of our translators in our Spanish service. He is one of your dream teamers. Can you give Pablo a great big hand? 4,000 families just two weeks ago in Colombia because we're living, we're living a legacy. We're giving as a church family to make a difference in the lives of people who can never repay. One of my favorite verses regard to this. When people are in an art, I just, sometimes I go on Facebook and I see these social media warriors and people arguing. I'm like, man, just do the gospel. Just live it. Don't argue. Just live it. Do good. And when necessary, use words. Especially if your words are negative and full of unbelief and doubt. If you have good words, use a lot of words. This guy, Cornelius, the Bible says Jesus comes to him and says, Cornelius, your prayer. He's a Roman. He's a Gentile. Man, the Jews and Gentiles still at this point, they're just, there's a separation. But he has a revelation of God and the heart of God and the goodness of God. And the Bible says, Cornelius, your prayers and your offerings to the poor have gone before the Lord and he remembers them. Your prayers for every missionary. Your prayer every time, every time. We bring a missionary. Every time you see a video, and as a church family, we pray for others in need. That prayer 
And that dollar has gone before the Lord as a memorial. It's exactly what it says. It's been noticed by God. You're going to live a legacy. You're going to live a legacy, good or bad. You're going to leave a legacy, good or bad. My wife and I, we've chosen to live and to leave a legacy of good for the next generation. You know where it starts at? It starts right in your home. It starts right in your own family. It starts right with your own kids. Both my boys are here today. I'm so honored today. But my oldest son today, my oldest son today, two years ago was stricken with this, I had never, I couldn't even pronounce the disease. It was called Guillain-Barre. Couldn't even, I mean, our family, you guys, we presented, we talked to you, we, you prayed, many of you supported and gave. And Paula sent me just a little reminder of like a week ago. This was exactly two years ago that Austin was in the hospital, paralyzed literally from the neck down. We were not sure that he was ever going to walk again. You know what God does during our times of struggle? You know what God does during our times of, of just having to work through the issues and problems of life? He's building something inside of us. You know what that something is? It's a double portion. It's a double portion of blessing. What God did just last year in my family, what God did is God gave us a double portion. I'm going to have my family because today I get the privilege of not only leaving a legacy, but living a legacy and dedicating baby Solomon and baby, baby Belle of me to the Lord Jesus Christ. Come on, can you welcome my family today as they come? I want you to see today, my son is more than walking. He's still making babies. Someone said amen today. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes. David and the Milan family are here today, and Austin and Paula. Oh, <laughs> I know it's tough, Amora. It's tough, but they love you. They really do. I'm going to take them in just a second here. Two little blessings sent from above. Twice the miles, smiles, twice the love. Sometimes miracles comes in pairs because God's BOGO. Everyone say, God's BOGO. Buy one, get one free. God blessed after... A very difficult season. God blessed my beautiful family with the bogo. They didn't get just one. They were praying for one. This is how slow I am. I'm, I am pretty slow. At Christmas, they gave me this box, and it had two baby things. That, what are they called? What's that? Uh, two, they had two onesies, but also the two proofs that they're ultrasounds. Oh, there's something else, too, like the little sticks. Pregnancy test. Yeah, the pregnancy test. That, that thing. <laughs> And I'm holding up this onesie, and I'm looking at these two. I'm like, why two pregnancy tests? It took me literally, I counted a minute and 30 seconds to realize that she was telling me that they're having twins. And here's really cool. So we got Austin and Paula, and I got Joey and Sandra. Right after Austin and Paula tell me they're going to have twins, Joey and Sandra, who over here to your left, guess what God gave them? God gave them a BOGO. God gave them two for one. Come on. So I just got to think there's something spiritual happening in the water at City Church. There are so, be careful. Man, if you're a childbearing age here at City Church, you just don't know. But there's a BOGO in the air because we're living a living, literally, a legacy. Not just an inheritance, but living and leaving something in the next generation. I'm going to take my little grandbabies here and I'm going to dedicate them to the Lord this morning. I'm going to show Solomon off first. This is Solomon right here. This is Solomon Clark. He's wise. Come on. Look at that. He's just studying you guys right there. This is baby Solomon. And uh, you know what was really cool? I was, actually, I was actually at a missions event in Wisconsin. 
And Paula texted me at 2.30 in the morning, and she said, you better get home quick because they're coming. Because I didn't find any that here I am dreaming about living a legacy as a church family, and God brings these precious gifts. Let's see if I can do, be- can do baby. I want to try to hold it too. Come on, you guys got to, somebody please take a picture of this quick here. I got her, I got her. My son, he's hanging on, man. He doesn't want to lose. Everyone say, hi, Solomon. Someone talk. Everyone say, hi, Bellamy, Catherine. Solomon and Bellamy. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom, and knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. I wrote down this verse for Bellamy. I just got to read the verse here real quick if I can turn it over here. From the abundance, from the abundance of his abundance, We've all received one gracious blessing after another. From his abundant blessing, we've all received one blessing after another. We received double blessing today, double portion. And that's what I'm praying for each one of you. Not just in the natural. I mean, that's, this is awesome. This is an amazing season in our family's journey. But I'm praying over each of you today that you'll receive a double portion. That double portion today is, and as I'm praying over Solomon and Bellamy today, I'm praying for a double portion of desire for God. So third generation, fourth. So my my kids, I got the I got the David family back here, Paula's parents and her grandmother's back here today, and her brother and and aunts and uncles back here in the corner, and cousins and sister-in-law. Guess what? They're all part of the City Church family. Come on, multiple generations right here. I'm praying for a desire for them to love the house of God, to love the Lord and love the ways of God. I'm praying for a spirit of faith to be built up in their hearts. I'm praying that they'd communicate the love and the grace of God to the next generation. Will you join with me as I dedicate, I dedicate these two precious babies, the living inheritance, my living legacy for the next generation. Stretch forth your hands today as I pray. Father, thank you today. Thank you. The amazing grace and the great the amazing privilege that you have given that you have given to us as a church family to live a legacy God today in my arms I hold two precious gifts two double blessings your bogo your bogo plan and we are so grateful today for Solomon Clark we're so thankful today for for Bella me Catherine we we're so thankful today, Lord, that you've given us these precious gifts for their parents, for Austin and Paula, and their heart for you. And God, the way they've already modeled their faithfulness and generosity, their faithful in giving, even when they've gone through this difficult season, God, you chose to pour out a double portion. You chose to pour out a double portion of blessing upon their home and upon their family. And we are so thankful today. Now, God, today, I know many in this room are opening their hearts. They're opening their hearts to you today. And God, I pray, I pray that you will bless. I pray, God, that you will touch. I pray that you will strengthen these babies, that you'll protect them from the evil one, that all the days of their life, they will experience your grace. They will experience your peace. They will know the favor and the goodness of God. I ask this now in Jesus' wonderful and mighty name. And everyone said? Amen. Amen. Come on, give the Lord a hand clap. Pastor Glenn. I think we have some gifts. We have a charge here. Okay. We do. Yep. I also have a charge. Yes. Yeah, we jumped the gun a little bit there. Granddad got excited. Pop, Pop, uh, Pop got excited. Pop, Pop got excited. That's right. Um, hey, one of the joys of being at a church so long is that Austin and Paula were both in my youth group. And so I've been able to watch them since they were teenagers all the way through the journey. And to, to be here on the stage today is such a blessing. Love you both so much. All right. So here we go. Austin and Paula, if it is your intention to present your child to the Lord and to pledge yourself to bring this child, these children, up in the nurture and guidance of the Lord, please say I do to the following. <laughs> you jump in. <laughs> do you, he's ready. Do you dedicate yourselves to God and his church that Jesus died for? Do you dedicate yourself, yourselves to raise Solomon and Bellamy in a godly home where Christ and his church are honored? Do you this day recognize Solomon and Bellamy as a gift of God and thank him for this blessing. Do you this day dedicate Solomon and Bellamy to the Lord? Do you here this day promise to give this child every possible benefit of a godly home, a strong local church, and a strong education? 
All right, friends and family, this is for us. This is a long one, so stay with me. Do you, family and friends this day, commit to living and partnering with Austin and Paula and being an example of a godly Christian community, of providing the encouragement and support for his family to experience the full blessing of Christian community and living? Do you, do you hear this day ask God's blessing upon S Solomon and Bellamy to guide, guard, and direct them throughout their years? Amen. Well, we have some gifts for you today. We have uh, two certificates of dedication, double portion there. And also, we have two special, they're both unique, but two gifts there for, for you guys. And then there is a letter to them to be open on their 12th birthday. And we also have some flowers for mom. Okay. We're working. She did There's all the hard work. Here. We got lots of stuff. There is a lot of gifts. And while we're at it, just, just take the pulpit. Just take no, it all. No, all right, no. we're just going to keep giving you stuff. But no, we love you guys. Love you guys. Thank you, church. Got them? Thank you, guys. Thank you, Kadavid family. Thank you. All right, so what's our response? What's our response today? Start where you're at. Start where you're at. Some people have never tithed, you've never given, you've never supported a project, you've never given to missions. Zechariah 4.10 says, don't despise the days of small beginnings. For the Lord rejoices to see the work begin. There's something that happens when you just start. Just do something small. First day of the week, every Sunday, have a reoccurring giving plan. Something that you're going to do, something you're going to give. I call this the 90-day challenge. I'm going to give the 90-day challenge to this congregation. I'm going to give the 90-day challenge to those of you that have never given to legacy or missions or never tithe. Just try it for 90 days. Just see. Just see what God will do. Just see what the Lord. I guarantee you, if you give consistently for 90 days to something other than yourself, I guarantee you, your window, your window of hope for the world, will begin. I guarantee you it will change. Because it won't just be something that's happening out there. Something starts to happen in here. You start to take an investment in what's taking place in the lives of other people. Give with a grateful heart today. Give with a grateful heart. Be thankful. What has God done for you? What has God done for you? I don't know about you today. I'm grateful that I got breath in my lungs. I'm grateful that I'm standing before you today, not a saint, but a sinner that say that God makes me into a saint and to his purposes, his plan. I'm thankful today. I'm thankful today. This week I did the funeral for a 52-year-old man who just died in his sleep. They don't have any, and there's no drugs, nothing involved. He literally went to bed. He went to bed on Thursday, never woke up again. It's like, whew. Man, I watched the mom and the dad, both parents still alive, hit, hugging on to that casket as their baby boy. I know he's 52, seems like an old guy to you, but man, to that, those parents, that was their baby. They put that baby boy into the ground. You don't know. I mean, you don't, that's not, it's just, you don't know. I mean, I just saw that this week. Be grateful for life today. Be grateful for life. Be grateful that you can live, you can live the blessed and generous life. Can I pray for you today? Father, you're calling us, the church family, to live a life of double portion. You want to pour out more grace. You want to pour out more blessing. You want to pour out more of your favor, more of your kindness. But God, that will be in direct response of what we give out to others and give back to you. So we give you our all. We give you everything. We give you our hearts. We give you our lives. We give you our pocketbooks. We surrender them to your lordship today. We thank you today for this amazing gift that we call life. We love you, Jesus. We worship you. We're going to stand together this morning. We're going to lift our voice in a song of adoration and worship to the Lord. Lord, we worship you. We love you. We bless you. Lord, in these next few moments, we invite your presence here to do what only you can do in our midst. In Jesus' name.
Let's worship.